Hey everybody, Ann here. I'm just kind of chilling out in my van at the lake. I don't know if you can see it out there. It's kind of cold. I did a little fishing a little bit earlier today. Didn't catch anything. Wasn't trying very hard. Only used one worm. I got my trusty sidekick here with me. And I love her. She's a very sweet, sweet baby. Um, she's making some progress. Any person that she greets, she loves. They love her. Um, she's really excited when they first meet them, but she warms right up to them. She kind of leans into them. Um, and so there was one situation. You want to tell them about that, Miss Betty? You want to tell them about the situation with the dog? There was a dog that belonged to two male campers. They were camping out in my spot. <laughs> but they had a dog. And um, so I was taking Betty for a walk, and they didn't keep their dog secured. And so the dog came shooting out of the tent right over to Betty. And, um, of course, I start flipping out because I don't want uh, Betty to hurt anything. She started barking really bad. The other dog was kind of like got his hackles up. So I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I'm grabbing her by her harness, practically lifting her up in the air. I'm like, get your dog, get your dog. And... The other dog, you know, Betty, she just kind of calmed down. The other dog just kind of shrugged his shoulders and like, what's the matter with you? So I walked away and I walked back and they were out there again. And um, I just kind of like, I took control of her. I, I basically just made her sit. I made her stay. I made her watch that other dog and not move. And I found out that the problem with Betty is Betty's owner. <laughs> me. Um, because I get so flipped out. I'm so afraid that she's going to hurt somebody else's dog. She, she's never even made any inclination that she would ever hurt a, a person. But I'm terrified she's going to hurt somebody else's best buddy in the whole world. But once I calm myself down and take control of her and make her be under my control. Um, I think Caesar the dog whisperer calls it calm submissive or something like that. Um, I don't know. I do not know, but, um, it, things were fine. And so I made her do that several times today when she was in situations that she would normally bark. What are you doing, girl? What? Oh, look at you. Um, like when some of the motorized vehicles, like the big, big lawnmowers that they bring by, um, with people on them that she didn't recognize, I made her sit and I made her stay and she did good. So I think what I need to do is start exposing her to other animals and seeing what happens. So the two guys said that they were going to come back another weekend. And uh, they would use their dog, which is a male. And they said it's an alpha male, so he's a, a very strong character dog. Very balanced, sweet dog. Um, he didn't show a, a moment of unhappiness when Betty was, or when, not Betty, when Betty's owner, me, was flipping out. Um, but they said that they would bring their dog back and uh, work with work with her a little bit. And I talked to some some of the other people here too. You are so spoiled. And um, so you know when I told them my concerns and whatnot, and they all understand. They all seem to be pretty nice people. So yeah, I think uh, I think Betty's owner needs some training. What do you think, Betty? Yeah, I think so too. But anyhow, in the van, so I'm getting sick of it. I am getting sick of the way that it looks. So um, I switched that little that little uh, chest with the cabinet thingy. Um, so and I just put that little wooden cutting board on top, and that's where I cook. Um, the porta potty is still located in there. I am going to get rid of the chest eventually. I just need to find um, the best solution for covering up the porta potty, and I'm just going to leave the porta potty either there or I'm going to put it over here somewhere. Um, and move one of the, I don't know, one of the chests from over here to over there. But um, I think what I really want to do is, oh, and see that chair there? It's just a plastic cheapy chair, um, very lightweight. It cost, it was like $9 on sale. I took the, the ottoman that was there, and that now is in the middle of, of the two seats because um, the other one has kind of fallen apart. But anyhow, I need mm -hmm. to get the wood paneling up. Okay, I need to get the ceiling insulated. I need to get the um, the rest of the walls insulated really well. They're not insulated very well right now. I need to um, fix the um, blackout coverings over the windows and then, of course, more insulation over that. This window over here 
I, I always keep it covered up. You know what? Because when people drive by, the road where I'm parked, it's really close to the road, but I am actually facing um, my barn doors. Oh, I'm not getting up. I'm too lazy. I'm tired. Um, they're facing out towards you know, shrubbery and whatnot, so it's nice. I keep the doors open, and um, it's pretty. But anyhow, this they just peer into that window. Everybody always does. They're always looking in that window. It just bugs me, um, which makes me wish that I had bought a panel van instead of one with a bunch of windows. So um, I think I'm going to panel over that. I am going to uh, black that out properly somehow. <laughs> I'm going to um, insulate over it like I have with the other windows that are all the way around here. There's windows all the way to here um, and I am going to cover up every single window in this video I mean in this video in this van except for my back windows and the windows on my doors over there panel panel insulation um, I'm ready to do it um, I may be able to get a couple guys um, to help me with it but if not I've been looking into some ways that it shouldn't be too hard for me to do it. I should be able to do it. I mean, it's got these ribs on here. It's got little places where you can you can already drill things into. Ooh, what's that? That better not be mold. Uh, no, it doesn't. It just looks like some, some dirt I need to get off. Because I get condensation really bad. Um, this is a sleeping area. And um, so I'm going to have to wipe that down. Anyhow, so... Yeah, I I am ready to do the real van build, the real real deal, and um, you know I'll probably redo the floor, and I will probably put down. Well, I like having carpeting down, but I will probably put some kind of um, like wood or laminate flooring. Well, I mean there's already wood flooring down there, but I don't know. I may improve it. I I may leave it the way that it is, but um, it needs to be insulated better. Um, so yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I have decided that I really love living van life. I love this lifestyle. What you doing, girl? Oh, look at that fat nose. Can I get it in? I can't get it in focus, but, um, I just, I love it. I'm not going to ever go back to traditional sticks and bricks living. Um, and I'm ready to invest some money into it now. If I could just get this portion of it done, get the mechanical, it still needs brakes, probably rotors, calipers, all of that kind of stuff. That's the big van repair that it needs. Um, so I don't know. I guess I should get that all that stuff done first. Um, and then, i got to just tell you, this is the most comfortable bed I have ever slept in. You guys have no idea. 8-inch memory foam from Walmart. Oh my God. Get it. You won't You won't regret it. Stop licking yourself down there. God. Anyhow, um, you know what? That's all I got for you guys today. And uh, so I will end this video with some cute shots of Betty. Me trying to wake her up and she's just not having any of it. Yes, when you travel with a dog in your van, there's going to be the dog hair situation. It's a daily struggle. for watching everybody i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you'll come back and watch more join me on my journey of my tiny life y'all have a good one